Hi, Morgan here for Onefinity, and today we're going to use a diamond drag bit to attach some glass on the CNC. Eh? Huh? Wait, can't, probably can't see it that good. Yeah, etching glass isn't normally something you'd think of when you hear CNC router, but it seemed like a fun project, so I gave it a shot. Quit hassling me. This is a diamond drag bit made by a company called Widgetworks, and I got it from our friends at Bits and Bits. It's available on their website. We'll put a link in the description for you. And if you use the Onefinity coupon code, 1F20, you'll get 20% off. You're welcome. Anyway, diamond drag bits do exactly what you'd expect. And as its name suggests, it doesn't spin like other bits. It has a quarter inch shank that goes into a router or spindle like any other bit, but it drags across the surface of the material, scoring your design into glass, acrylic, stone, and soft metals like aluminum, brass, copper, stuff like that. The tip is spring-loaded to allow the bit to apply pressure into the glass without breaking it. The amount of pressure is determined by the depth of cut programmed within the toolpath. We'll get to that in a minute. In the instructions that came with the bit, the manufacturer shows a few different ways you can toolpath it based on the design. For this design, I went with a quick engrave toolpath in V-Carve. I had to create a new tool in my tool library using the parameters given in the provided instructions. I stuck with a 120 degree tip and set my depth slash pressure to 0.2 inches. This is a single color design, just white and black, and it has some large areas of solid black. Rather than just outlining those areas, I selected to fill to give it as much contrast as possible between light and dark. The method used to fill the dark areas is just a hatch pattern, and you can set whatever angle you want for that. Now this part is totally optional, but if you want the front of your glass to be smooth and keep the etched part on the back, you'll need to mirror the design in your toolpathing software. I personally prefer the smooth side facing forward. As far as toolpathing goes, I mean, that's really all there is to it. The programming is super easy. Now let's journey from the digital world into the physical and get the machine ready for this operation. Welcome to the desert of the real. Again, this couldn't be easier, but here are a few things to be mindful of. First, make sure this lower part here that houses the spring-loaded tip is screwed in all the way. The first time I tried this, I didn't have it fully seated, and after dragging around the glass for a bit, it got looser and looser and sat too low. Second, because the tip is spring-loaded, you don't have to worry too much about zeroing out your z-axis. I didn't even get out my probe. All I did was leave it loose in the collet, let the tip rest on top of the glass, zeroed out my z-axis on the controller, then tightened the collet. Easy. Other than that, there's not much you need to know. Secure your piece of glass to the wasteboard however you normally would. And the rest of this operation is business as usual. Now, in researching how to do this and all the videos I watched, they were really serious about making sure the glass is clean. I mean, I've had some pieces of glass just hanging around the shop for years, and they're not too pretty. I don't really see how it matters all that much, but sure, clean your glass. You do you. While the CNC was etching away, I started working on the wooden base. The glass is pretty heavy, so I wanted the base to be kind of thick to be able to support the weight, and so I could install a little LED in the bottom. I beveled the front facing edge because I wanted to add an engraving and I wanted it to face kind of up and out. However, in doing so, I'd have no way to engrave the face simply because of the angle and the capacity of the machine. So I trimmed about a half inch thick strip off the front edge at the same angle, brought that to the machine, and ran my engraving tool path, which is in Comic Sans for obvious reasons. Then I just glued it right back onto the front of the base. Once the base was all put back together, I took some measurements of the glass and the light. I made the cavity for the light a bit oversized and I cut a little channel for the power cord. The slot for the glass is dead on the same width as the thickness of the glass because I didn't want this thing to have any wiggle. The length of the slot is dead on the same width as the glass. I knew I'd have to chisel out the corners to make it fit because of the radius created by the bit. I could have made the slot slightly longer to avoid that, but I wanted the edges to be tight to the glass, so chiseling it was. I gave it a light sanding, rubbed on some oil finish, glued the light in the cavity, then dropped the glass in and it was done. And now I have this ridiculous thing I have no idea what to do with. All right, I enjoyed the heck out of this project and I hope you found it helpful. And as always, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. And hit that notification bell for more unique and often absurd projects like this one. All right, thanks for watching. Y'all be good.